Hi, welcome to ADM 320. We're going to start talking about continuous random variables. So we're now going to start talking about normal probabilities. You know when a random variable follows, the distribution of that random variable follows a bell-shaped curve. In this case, where this video is just looking only at the standard normal distribution. The standard normal di distribution, recognize this is supposed to be a bell-shaped curve, it's just not as straight as we'd like, has a population mean of zero and a population standard deviation of one. Which means if you're looking at this, the uh, x-axis here is a z-score. And if we had a z-score of zero, that would imply that our value is exactly at our mean. Recall from previously that the value subtracting the mean, that difference divided by the standard deviation, is actually the z-score. So a z-score of zero would imply that our value is exactly at the mean. A positive z-score would imply that our value is above a mean. And a negative z-score would imply that our value is below the mean. So that's why this side will always be negative z-scores, and this side of the curve would always be positive z-scores. So knowing that, let's look at the function. And the function here has a uh, norm.s.dist function. And in Excel, you use the dot periods. In earlier versions, you'd actually have no periods whatsoever. And the way the function works is it needs to know its z-score. The only other thing it needs to know is whether it's true or false, that whole idea of cumulative. And in normal distribution, you always want your cumulative to be true, always. Absolutely always, don't use false, only use true. So if you know that's always true, the only thing you really do need to know in the problem is the z-score. And the result will always give you area to the left of that z-score. So let's look at a picture of that. So let's say someone asks you to find the probability that z is less than 1.25. In Excel, that would be norm.s.dist, 1.25 comma true, and it would give you the probability that z is less than 1.25. So let's see that picture. If you see my normal curve here, you'll see that my z-score of 1.25 is to the right of that mean in the middle, my, where the positive z-scores is at. But if I only run this function with a comma true on it, I'm going to get this area to the left. And that's all the function can do. So I have to really think about the problems. If the problems ever ask me area above that z-score, I'm actually going to have to use a 1 minus in front of that norm.s.dist function. Because you know the area of the curve does add up to 1. So if you know the left side from the function, you can get the right side by doing a 1 subtraction of that resolving function. Because these two areas together have to add up to 1. So if you want the left, only run the function itself. If you want the right-hand side, you want to do a 1 minus in front of that function. So let's do some problems, because that might be useful on this. So we have some problems here. Find the probability that z-score is less than 1. Well, less than means I do want the area to the left. So all I would have to do here is equal norm.s.dist, and I'm going to put in the z-score they gave me 1, and then the cumulative is always going to be true here, always true. And you can see that sometimes it'll give you a bunch of decimal places, but you usually only need three decimal places. You don't need nine decimal places on these answers. So you can see here the answer is about 0.841 for the probability the z is less than to, or equal to 1. So then we look at the second part to this. Find the probability the z-score is between a negative 0.5 and a positive 1.25. Well, here this is going to be a, a, a subtraction. We have to do a subtraction between two different normal DIST functions, norm S, DITS function. And the key to do this is you always start with the norm.s.dist function on the higher of the two z-scores. So I know I want to do a subtraction. If I'm doing a between, I'm going to do a subtraction between a norm S, DIT of the higher value, subtract away the norm s d i s t of the lower value. So that's my concept in my head. So I now have to put it into the correct cell. So I'll start with my equals norm dot s dot d i s t. And the higher of the two, let's look. I have a negative 0.5 and I have a 1.25. Well, very obviously 1.25 is the higher of the two values and comma true. So now I have the area to the left of that guy. And I need to subtract away the area to the left of the lower guy. And when I do that, I'm actually going to get the, air, the only area left over is what's between. So I'm going to do a subtract norm dot s dot d i s t. 
and now it's the negative 0 0.5 comma true. And when I do that subtraction between the norm dot s dist of the higher minus norm dot s dot dist of the lower, I'm actually getting the area between, which is what the question is asking. So this is just helping you understand the concept. This is actually the work for that answer right here. So now we have the third question. And the third question is find the probability the z-score is greater than 1.58. Well, now I'm thinking back and I'm remembering that this function will only give me area to the left. But if you remember that x-axis, you'll remember that the z-score is being greater would actually be area to the right of that z-score. So now let me think back. The whole area under the curve is actually equal to 1. So norm.s.dist by itself only gives me area to the left only. So if I want area to the right, we discussed, we're going to have to do a 1 minus. We're going to have to do a little extra math in front of our function to actually have it say, okay, the whole thing adds up to 1, take this piece away from 1, and it'll tell me what the area to the right is. So for this problem, I'm going to do an equals 1 minus norm.s.dist, and then put in 1.58 comma true. Because now I'm actually finding area to the right of the 1.58, not just area to the left. And now you see I'm tons of decimals, so I'm going to move that down so it's more like just three, so we can get an idea of an answer. And it's about 0 0.057. So hopefully this work here showed you how that function works, and it reminds you when do you need to do just area to the left, when you need to do area between, and when do you do area to the right. And it's all based on how they ask the question. So please watch carefully when using the function, and I hope it goes well for you.